This video is brought to you by Diamond Pacific Tool Corporation. Diamond Pacific is America's favorite diamond tool, wheel, and lapidary machine manufacturers. For nearly half a century, Diamond Pacific has set the industry standard for diamond lapidary equipment. Join the majority of professional lapidaries and choose Diamond Pacific products such as their Nova Wheels, Pixie, Genie, and Titan Gem Makers, as well as their wide selection of other high quality lapidary diamond products. Check out Diamond Pacific today and find out why they're considered America's premier diamond lapidary tool manufacturers. Not that these folks need any introduction, but Justin Thomas. Yep, that's Ruth. Yeah, I'm sure he was awesome. Black Opal Direct. Yeah. The legend, the myth, the man. <laughs> you too, oh, it's, too, it's too much. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's way too much. <laughs> well, it's becoming fact, I mean. <laughs> No. For real? No, it's just fun. It's just fun. <laughs> Did this show open up on Monday? Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, yes. Yeah. So second Tuesday day? Sunday. This is our third day. I don't even know what day it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> getting lost in the days too. And it ends Sunday. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> the gemfish, it's out. Last time I talked to you, yes. I don't believe it was yes. out yet. Yeah. It's it just as good as you promised everybody. Two years it took me to develop this thing. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with it. Um, it has so many basic features, but it does exactly what I wanted it to do. And it's mainly um, for opal and um, and finding inclusions and, and cracks and stuff like that in opal when I'm evaluating a, a piece of a piece of opal in the rough, or even a cut stone. It, it, you can see a lot in um, in the cut stone as well. It has two different settings. Um, low and high and yeah. off and the offsetting is for when you're traveling so it doesn't accidentally press on in your luggage and you flatten the battery so if you're on a field trip so but you can turn it on uh, the low setting is for small gems tiny gems because it can get too bright and then the second setting is, is bright now, unlike the, the Chinese models that you, you see everybody holding, they heat up, and everybody says, "Oh, they heat up too much," and I can't, they actually get can't hold on to them. Now. Where this, um, this you won't be able to heat up. You can hold your your finger on it for 20 minutes, and it, it won't be hot. So you still be still be able to touch it, no problem. And the reason is because. The, it's got the same battery as every other, other torch, but it has a smaller LED light with an optical lens that magnifies the light through the, um, the nozzle and it points out in one direction. So if I have a piece of opal like this and I'm pointing it towards my face and I shine the light, the light won't shine in my eyes because it's directed straight. So as long as I have it not directed straight in my eyes, right. I can still look at the piece of opal without having to squint because all of a sudden some of the torches, they, they hit you in the eyes and, oh, wow, that's yeah, too bright. I cut my finger around the tip to, to make the, the light right. say straight. That's, that's exactly right. Right. So I'm, I'm really proud of this actually because it, it's turned out really great. And it's also water resistant. So if I'm on the machine and I'm getting wet and I need to look in the water, I can still, I don't worry about it because it's, um, yeah, it's, it's water resistant. Also, it has a USB-C charger. Which so is very modern. Yeah, iPhone's out with exactly. the lightning. Yeah. It's yeah. everything now and it's going to stay. Yeah, that's it. And to be honest, I have not flattened in six months to a year. I haven't flattened the battery on this. It just doesn't. Oh, doesn't yeah. Flat. yeah. Man, I replaced the, the battery. Well, so mine's not rechargeable. Yeah. Um, I think it cost me a hundred and some dollars. It gets so hot, it, I had to return one because it was burning me and other things. And even if I don't use it, if I go back to use it about a week later, the batteries are dead. I don't know how it's yeah. training batteries. Yeah. I got to buy them from Amazon every time, these specialty goofy batteries. Yeah. And then once he did that, I was like, I know where I'm going. I rechargeable, yeah. it doesn't get hot. It does exactly what I need without having to cup it. Mm -hmm. um, and not only that, but the other one gets so hot. If you put it against a piece of opal and you're not paying attention, you're heating that opal up right behind that spot, like really, really hot, like dangerously hot. So 
especially if you left it down like that and went away for a second. Right. Yeah, yeah. I'd be concerned. Yeah. Yeah. So and, um, I'm all over this. This is this one right here is mine. Oh, the, the one in the box is. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not the demo. Yeah. Unless it comes at a discount. This one. Yeah. <laughs> this one's had been through the ringer. I've been playing with it and cutting yeah, ovals in my lives off. every time I do a live every second week. Oh, and oh you're telling everything. me I could buy that one and resell and it for more because I can so say I this is Injustice Lives. I am. I'd try it. Um, can folks get it at blackgobaldirect.com? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Absolutely. You can get them on the, on the, at the show. You can get them on the, that website. We also have um, gemfish.com, which is oh, its fantastic. dedicated website. Fantastic. Fantastic. The next level, brother. Yeah. Um, so, oh, did you know that, that Gemfish Opals was my not name before Black Opal Direct? Right. No, not at all. I was going to ask you how you <laughs> came up with that name, because that for a flash that I'm like, Gemfish, I was like, interesting. Now it totally makes sense. Yeah. And when and I was so younger, and I'm um, still a fisherman now, but I love fishing, I love fish, I love gems, so why not tie, a, tie the name in together? There you go. <laughs> I knew it had it had to have meaning. I've, I've not known something you've done so far didn't have some kind of meaning behind it, exactly which is great. Yeah. You know what, Justin? We've spent the entire day cherry-picking the biggest names in Opal today, and everybody had a gem fish. Everyone was using a gem fish. They Andrew can Bergman use, says hi, by the way, and thanks for a gem They can fish. use anything. Yep. They can get their own made, yeah. and they're using a gem fish. Um, so Except for Gene. You've not sold Gene one yet? No. no you I need to get him on it, because yeah. I told him about it. And he's, he's holding the one I'm talking about I used to have. Yeah. Ed's junk. Yeah. And I told him. Yeah. You gotta hold them all. That's hilarious. No, actually, I gotta say, some actually some miners in Lightning Ridge that keep to themselves and they don't really associate with me because not everybody deals with each other. Right. But um, some secret people have been buying these secretly, and I know that they got them in the, on the mining fields. Like, don't tell anybody. Hey, can you slide me a G? Other opal dealers around Australia are also also grabbing onto them. So it's, it's really cool. It means a lot that. Um, Everyone's trusting in my product. Yeah. I'm Justin. Can I trouble you to demonstrate? Yeah, the sure. Torch? So the best way to use a gem torch, I'm going to call it a torch, even though you guys call it a flashlight. Um, let's go into the dark. So let's go out outside these lights. And um, the best way to, to look at an opal is in the dark, so that the torch can actually do its job. And you can shine it in there and look for where the where the sand spots might be or cracks uh, and they'll show up in the form of glinting lines or uh, little black dots inside the colour so um, really really handy handy little torch to just find where you can cut the stones so this is very helpful with great opal but maybe even particularly helpful for beginners who are buying lower quality opals absolutely absolutely if they want to keep an eye on where the color bar is going you can shine the light through most color bars in in an opal and you can see usually out the other side so if that opal is showing color outside the other side of the color of the piece that means that there is a color bar there that's worth cutting Amazing. Mm. And if I could trouble you for one more yeah. thing, can yeah. you show me your favorite piece that's new to you this year? Yeah, sure. So you saw the ultimate gym last time, didn't you? I believe so. Yeah. Was that your father's? Yeah. No, it was, it was no. Uh, never was my father's, but it was found. Found. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is um, this is a beautiful pinfire gem that I uh, acquired. It ha it's got such a beautiful cut and a perfect dome and a nice spread of colour right across the whole gem. So it's a perfect stone in in my opinion. It's an absolute firecracker. So I really I really like that stone and it's nearly sold twice. This this um, the lady there's a lady maybe coming back for it. Tomorrow, so. she's got to play the hardball. You of know course, what I mean. Of <laughs> we all do that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, just to have another look at this guy. This is the ultimate gem. It's the best stone I've ever. Let me quickly wipe it. <laughs> it's the best gem I've ever seen or owned. And I have to do this. I have to take it out of the light. Let's go into the shade, and I'll show you how much better it gets the darker it becomes. Check out the play of colour in the dark. Like it just gets better and better. Such a 
roof again. Explosive. Yeah, I love it. Such a beautiful gem. That really light blue um, mixture with that red is so rare. I've seen a lot of gems that are blue red, but the blue is usually a darker blue. And this blue is a really light blue. It's absolutely magnificent. Never seen that color combination since my dad and I have been in Oakland. Love it. Justin, mm. you're not doing the TCC this year. The TGMS. T yeah, the, the, the main yeah, show. No, we're not doing that. Um, so they can come find you. Here and I, only here. Yep. And the people who can't find you can YouTube, yeah. Facebook, Instagram, blackopaldirect.com. Absolutely, all of it. Yeah. How are you on stock for the gemfish? Is it readily available right yeah, now? Yeah, we still have, we still got quite a few boxes before we make another order. So, Fantastic. Um, if you need to get one now, um, get in before Dave puts his video up. <laughs> uh, or just after, because they will probably be mostly gone. So. I can't thank you enough for your time, brother. Thank you. I appreciate You're the real it. deal. It's really awesome and, to see uh, you again. You know, you, you, you help the industry so much. One more quick question. Yeah. You're using cerium for a lot of your opals? For my polish cerium oxide, yes. Is there a particular cerium that you like more than others? Some people are swearing by French. Is this a secret sauce you don't want to talk about? No, there's a, there is a secret sauce about it, though. Um, to the naked eye... Okay, cerium oxide is made for glaziers, it's for po polishing glass, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people go and find the finest cerium you can find, and that's not what you want. It's actually one of the more coarser cerium's that you want, because to the naked eye, a coarse cerium will still polish an opal beautifully. Even under a 10, 20 power loop, you'll still see a perfect polish. So, if you want to polish and still be able to cut away scratches quite well, get a coarser cerium. So there's different grades. Definitely. Yeah. And some people use leather. You use muslin? Muslin? Uh, I use um, felt? felt. Felt. Compressed felt. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Justin, thank you so much, brother. Pleasure. You're amazing. Probably. Let me um, put it in this shirt. This is some nice, nice lightning ridge, black opal rough. And you'll see that the, the nice stuff usually comes small. It's rarely in really, really big, chunky, chunky pieces, because if not, they get separated and put in that case. But like in this one here, there is, this is called a P knobby. Oops. And this one here is probably, if you'll see, there's a color bar right there. And you can see the color underneath here, and it runs all the way around right there. You see, you can see it. See it right there and there. So these tend to have a high concentration of color, and they can cut the most phenomenal stones. The hardest part is determining which side do you want the top to be. So you see, it's bright this way, and then there's very little um, pot sitting right here. So do you go down this way? and then set on white, or do you go down this way where this is gonna turn black and it's gonna multiply its value? Fantastic. So I, I am hoping, I'm hoping I can get a, a good deal on this, but this is, uh, this is $2,000 for this rock, but you'll see there's, look at the color in that thing. And they'll cut small, but small pays still. But absolutely full, full of color. Most lightning ridge comes out the ground looking like this. With lots of sand in it. And they have to tumble them to wash them off. These are tumbled, you can tell they're rounded, but they just, because the sand's so thick on it, it won't come off. And so you'll see the price kind of matches the fact that they're counting the weight, including the sand that can't come off. And in these cases, these are gambles because you have no idea what's inside of there. All you see is a little bit of color right there. And the rest of it doesn't show anything else. So you just don't know. So that's an $800 gamble, and that's a tough thing to swallow for a lot of people. But to give people a good idea of quality, you know, the, the less expensive stuff to more expensive stuff. You can see the difference on how 
one shows all this color and the other one, you're gonna have to really dig into it to find color. But there can be something really, really nice in there. You never know. Put those right there. And then um, you had um, some nicer high-end rough down there. You're trying to give the viewers ideas of different levels of rough. Yeah. Sorry, I'm kind of waking up. <laughs> See, there's smaller parcels of rough, but all showing promise of color. Yeah, I see. Potential. I see yeah. yeah, and that's usually how they sort it. So they're going to sort it, and first they're going to sort it by stuff that's, you know, right. this is going to have more of a jelly opal in it, very light, nothing bright colored. That's going to be a lesser value than, let's say, this rough where you can see the bright oranges and greens already. These are already kind of roundabout shaped in, in some cases. And I mean, look at that! Look at the color in that that thing. Can you see it? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can see it. Cool. You're getting a good shot of that. How much is that? Okay, so this one you're looking at ten grand. So. 10,000. Where did you get that from? Oh, I see. Take the 7.5 off, right? Yeah, but there's a serious stone sitting right so, there. If it's hard, the the there's, there's some, there's some nice color in this one. Hence the price. So, the way with Sally stuff works. I believe so, like this case and this case. So you'll notice here that it's 75. Take that number 75 off. And the next set of digits after that represent it. So this one is 3,700 right here. And this one's 10. But you see the difference in, in color? See how it's got, it's got some beautiful bright and different colors other than blue and green. And it makes this one more valuable than that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am good here. We'll be back. Let me show you an example of good, crazy, you know, rough. All right. Um, he has insane stones inside here. I think the price is a little bit high. I don't know if it's because of it being in America and, you know, the show and all that stuff. They're always here, but I'm going to show you that this rough is great. So here's the rough, and for example, I, I like, like, here. like <laughs> you can see the color rate, that skin right there, all right there. And I think how thick that color bar is. It goes from up there all the way down to here, all the way around. That's going to cut a person pretty decent, pretty decent stone on a, kind of a gray potch. It's not, you know, it's the middle of the great, middle of the line as far as value when it's all said and done and cut. Um, um, we have, I think there's some on here that but I think he wanted 500 for this one piece of rough, which that's a hard one for me to swallow. Is this all cool? Like our little, our um, little I want to say this awesome. might be Lightning Ridge. Look at the, look at the bar on that. You can't see it there, but look. That's Thank you, honey. You're welcome. Some insane color. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Look at the bars to that. If you guys find some lovely pieces that you like, I can get a price for you. We do it by the pieces. Yeah, I uh, I had you price that one, but honestly, I felt it was 
pretty went through a guy through an estate sale. Exactly. I know. You're right. <laughs> so that comes in, we said, approximately 20,000 a carat or something like that. Is that how it worked out to be? Because we're at 200 and I'm not sure what the carat is. 18 carats. 18 carats. Fabulous. Did you do the cutting on this fabulous piece? No, this piece was come out of the ground in 1962. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. And I was not alive to cut it at that stage. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of stone you cut, you shake. Because every time you touch no, the wheel, no. you're like, a little bit of money coming off at any time, no? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess if you're cutting the gentle, you know, So, like I said, this pot in color is, she's being very generous. There's a, so much color in here that it, it literally could be sorted out and sold for more. Um, Sander deals primarily in Lightning Ridge. Now, I know I've gotten various fields of Lightning Ridge, like mm -hmm. Mulga. My best mm -hmm. pieces of Mulga came from Sandra. Um, Thank you. She takes care of you, and I recommend y'all seek her out. Um, you're, um, are you on Opal Auctions? I can't remember. You're on Opal Auctions? Yeah, we are in Opal Auctions. And what's your uh -huh. user on Opal Auctions? Queen of Opal. Queen Opal. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Make close mine. Oh, I was going to say, it makes sense. Perfect name. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> well, and, and what do you think about her logo? She made that herself. What? And I thought it was the most amazing. <laughs> and that is my smile too. Can you tell? Look at the beautiful lip. Can oh, you tell? Yeah, I can tell? Isn't that the most beautiful logo? I, th I don't think you can get any better than that. <laughs> no. Thank and she you. said it was actually just kind of by accident. It turned out to be yeah. amazing. Like nine years ago. So, so folks, uh, get an idea. So this has um, two thousand two hundred grams. Mm -hmm. And what are you asking for? Two thousand two hundred grams of your fashion color. Uh -huh. 2500 American dollars. And Man. this is a Wait, lot. It's like a dollar a gram? Less. Oh, that was, it was 11 times the price for less around the corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, literally, that's less than a dollar a gram. That's unheard yeah. of for Lightning Ridge, including yes. Potch and Color, because even this piece, it, let's say, we don't know if there's color in there. There's bright color. But let's say there's not. It's just got a big black solid potch. That mm -hmm. potch in its own could be used for backings and it's got a value. Exactly. You can use the potch. Yep. So, and this is not, there's a big difference between this and some of the other roughs she has as far mm -hmm. as the brightness of the color. Because mm -hmm. if it's super intense and super bright, it would be foolish of her to sell it at that price because it has a much better value than that. But this deal here, you cannot go this. wrong I've never with a seen, deal like I've this. I've never even heard of a better deal. No, this is insane This one has Australian red, open. you see? There is red in the green, look, orange. Look at that. Mm. You can see it underneath the skin. That's just gonna... You don't see reds in pots and color. No. Usually it's just blues mm -hmm. and a little bit of greens, but this has got all, it's got a little hidden plethora of all kinds of stuff. And as we all know, she doesn't know, nor do I know what's in here. You can see it's clipped, all miners clip the edges, but you don't know. That color can run totally under here and get you a nice, beautiful stone. You can make exactly. beautiful picture stones. There's all kinds of stuff you can make out of here. And this is probably the thickest piece of sand on the whole material. Remember I was telling you that, you know, how there are a lot of sands included in the mm -hmm. weight. That's the, the most you've seen in this whole parcel. It's really nothing. It's super clean. And that also plays. Normally, you, at that price, you would get so much sand with your material that you're paying for mostly sand. Look at that. Look at this one. That one is... And the red goes there. And that is in this parcel. Now, Dave, one thing I want to show you, if I were going to cut this, you notice how thin the opal is sitting on top of the sand? The sand is holding this together right now. I can see there's cracks and stuff. So in this case, the only thing I would do is bring the sand down about here to keep it intact and use a Dremel and clean this up and make it a great specimen. Because that's, or you could cut thin pieces for inlay if it comes out nice. But, you know, thin bars like that, the sand's holding it together. But I see red right there. I mean, there's, oh my God. I look at there, there are solid. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. You will make your money back on this so fast by cutting a couple of stones. Thank this you. is huge. 
And the idea is to leave room for you guys, for the lapidary artists to make money and then that's you awesome. Most likely will come back to me. <laughs> I always come back to you every time. You I come see done. you first. <laughs> Thank so, you. Uh, let all the viewers know what booth are you at? So we are here in Pueblo Gem Show Courtyard Pavilion booth number 44. Number 44. Yes, correct. Make sure you tell them that John and Dave sent you. Awesome. So if you walk into the main door, the main entrance, so you take a left and you'll see this fabulous banner above her <laughs> You can't miss it. Thank you, Dave, and thank you, John. You guys are very kind. It's, 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 it's an absolute honor to meet you. Thank you. Oh my God, thank you. Likewise. And John is a good friend, you know, we've been in touch for a couple of years now and yeah. always so happy to see each other again. She, and she takes time to respond to messages and stuff. She is a fantastic seller. Thank you. We have to look after each other. We have to look after the customers. If they need guidance, you know, for pricing or yep. getting an idea of appraisals, you know, we are always there willing to help. Yep, and there's some vendors that if you're not spending a certain dollar amount, they're not going to give you their time. Sandra doesn't matter if you're spending five bucks, you're spending five thousand. She's going to give you your time, and that's awesome. Look at that. So that's actually black opal with the blue color. It's going to probably be sitting on gray. I doubt it's going to go black on top. But you can see the color hiding in that. Pull the top off there, and that thing is going to be a stone. It's almost, it's literally edge to edge color. That's going to be a phenomenal stone. And like black, all black opal, it comes at a higher price than really any other opal on the market. Because rarely do you get bright colors coming out of the ground. There's more potch only. And so, you know, pound for pound, Lightning Ridge produced the least amount of color. But that's why it comes at its price, because how rare it is. Fantastic. Thank you. Amazing. Is this the, the last of the uh, large parcels you have left? Watch and color, yes, this is the largest we have, but we have some other cutters, yeah. but just a couple of parcels. Would you be willing to break this up at all, like see. maybe half or something like yes, that? Yes, maybe okay. half and half, yes, definitely. Okay. Um, so I'm going to come back because I that was that was on my mind to come back and get okay, some yeah. from you because I am all about supporting Sandra. Yes, I'm all about yes, supporting my vendors that come out from Australia because they spend a lot of money and a lot of time to bring their stuff out here and set up. And so I am so lucky to have her here to see it in person because videos sometimes never really do it justice. Yes, I know. I won't. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Don't use the special lights, the special camera, the special everything. It's just so difficult. You heard of the not 360 cameras, but 3D cameras that supposedly some people are using for opals. It uses two lenses. Oh, really? really? Yeah, made by Panasonic, $12,000. Oh what? my god. <laughs> but yeah, but I guess it helps to capture more without. Because mm. mm. you know, a lot of people will oversaturate mm. things for. This is so cool. So one thing I want to show the viewers, you know, a lot of lighting ridge, you'll notice it runs in a seam, so it's a line. Now sometimes the line goes like this. Um, every once in a while you get one where it's just little pockets of, of opal inside the stone, but most of the time it's a line, unlike boulder that you think it's a line, but it's not. But here, if you'll look real carefully, you'll see that line's running this way. And so some people would buy this thinking they're going to rub all this off and get this all this color but there's probably a high probability the color just sitting right underneath my finger mm -hmm. and nowhere else because i have no indication of any color anywhere else now of course it's rough so we can hit it with the wheel right here to maybe see if there's something there but most likely it's going to be right there just there and that's still an educated guess because i'm not god mm -hmm. i can't tell you what's in it but look at this even this stone that this would be a beautiful picture stone. You can actually cut it, in, you know, like that, or you can cut it, you know, different ways to incorporate that. That all has value. It's got some beautiful grain going through it. It looks like it's tried to go black a little bit, but it didn't. Getting dark in the center. Look at this right here. Oh my. Oh yeah. Fabulous. 
Now, and you can see the bar go around. Does it go up at an angle or anything, or is that two bars? Two bars. Oh, two yeah. bars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I would touch the top a little bit to see how mm -hmm. that bar faced and see how big the other, yeah. yeah. But that's all part of the game of opal when you're cutting it. It's like, you know, you hit the wrong side the wrong way or anything mm -hmm. like that, you could lose your bar. Or you could win. Hopefully win. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you can lose on this. <laughs> no, not you, this you material. You can pick out your favorites, sell the stuff that you don't want to cut, mm -hmm. and triple your money off of just reselling the yeah, stuff you, you don't want to cut. You don't get Hopefully. Lightning Ridge for less than a dollar. Game. It's, it's so, non-existent. Yeah, She's, I know. And without color, because a lot of people call pots and color to pebbles and two chips there. Oh, but yeah. the, the color is there, you see the chips, but you can cut actual, like good size stones here. Oh yeah. Like, I love this color. I actually made a beautiful ring with, you know, the line, the yeah. lemon. And so they refer to that, that kind of opal is called jelly opal. Mm -hmm. I refer to it as water opal, but I gotta be careful because the Ethiopians mm -hmm. have water opal and it's not like that. It just means it's, it's more oh, of a watery really color. color. Yeah. Um, they, it just all, it makes, and it's extremely, extremely stable. Oh, wow. She has a good eye. I don't know if y'all can see, but there, you can barely see the color popping through and it's running all the way through mm -hmm. there. And there is some red there around. Mm -hmm. And you can see where the bar keeps going. So this, I mean, this one right, potentially this one stone could pay for this bar so up to almost two times. If you could see here, there is red here, and there is red here. So yeah, as John mentions, the bar could go around. Not here. So I'm just taking it down on the top until you start seeing that color and then you slow down with your grits and go with a lighter grit so you don't burn through your color. Because you see, it's, it does take a special skill to cut thin color bars. As long as you don't go fast with heavy grits, you can totally capture a thin color bar. But people go at it too heavy. And once that heavy grit cuts into that thin color bar, you'll never polish it out all the way. So it's just taking your time. This is a magnificent stone. Thank I, um, you. I mean, I swear. Fabulous. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm gonna, um, we're gonna go see Elizabeth real quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then. Um, Have you seen Sally again? Look, look at the, you can see the color pattern in that. Now, and this one is a good example of what I was talking about earlier, how sometimes it just comes in pockets. And you notice it doesn't, that, the color is right here. And you'll see a bar here, but you don't see a bar running through here. So this has kind of got like opal here, opal here, some pieces there. Um, this one's got a pretty decent bar, but might be plagued with some sand in some spots. So you won't get the whole stone, but you might get smaller stones. You don't know until you get into it. See how the blue's sitting on the black? That'll intensify the color, and it makes it more valuable when the blue and black are together. Well, any color on black. I shouldn't say blue and black, any color on black. And putting them side by side to compare them, look at the difference in intensity of color. So this got blues, it's got plenty of colors, but you notice it's got a very intense blue, so that's a different grade up. So Sandra, tell everybody, what, what are you asking um, on the, the darker? This parcel, oh. hang on, I think it has the ticket that here. That one's 22, that was that like, that's that. Uh -huh. You just had it. Gorda, a cuanto esta este? This one is four grand. Oh wow, that's still, a I was expecting well over ten thousand dollars. For real? Yeah. <laughs> well, there was already a lot of prices. But there's a lot here. Look, this is a huge rock there. Wait, huge I'm there. just gonna give somebody an example real quick. Let me take these. What a fantastic price! Thank you. I love this stone. 
So, Dave, online when people are selling um, lightning rich uh, black opal rough, this is the average size you're seeing on those. You might have a piece or two like that that, you know, have a tiny bit of color like that in it. But this is what the average size of the parcels, you know, you see on them. People break them small little pieces, a little off cuts. There'll be color in there, sometimes a kingstone. Um, you'd see the difference in the stuff that coming in this is huge. The potential of having cuttables in here versus here, big difference. Big, big difference. And you see my thumbnail for size. You can that, That's a small... That's a small stone when I tame your cut. Stone, small stones have value, don't get me wrong, but just to get an idea for size comparison when you see stuff online, seeing it in person is a whole different thing. So take note of that. Look the intensity in this blue. Mm. Oh, oops. okay. Royal blue. Going with the light. No, that's fine. Mm -hmm. It's so all the way so through. Electric. Mm -hmm. That's gonna mm -hmm. make a nice, mm -hmm. nice dome. Mm -hmm. Big stone to the top here. This is a thousand all of this. That's also a one thousand eight hundred and sixty-seven grams. Is the two parts two thousand dollars. Look at that. In the camera, that's just blowing up right there. That's awesome. Just goes to show the different angles. So I'm looking at this angle and it's not shining much, but the angle he has, it's and just we have huge specimens. Oh! How much is this one? Color. What's the weight? I don't know, but it's like a... Like 300 grams? Half, 400 half grams? Half a kilo, maybe. Uh -huh. Half a, a kilo. Big. And the bar goes around. Yeah, it was about Wow. And you definitely have black pots right there, which means you're going to have black in there. Yeah, you see everywhere. If you chip it, it's black. Yep. So it's going to look like that. Yep. You know, it's got a, the gray skin on the outside. Right. But the inside is all black. Oh, look at that. I mean, that color bar is running literally from there to there all the way around. It's just a you know, big. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, that's interesting. It's got a never seen a orange potch like that before. Huh. Look at that color bar even runs around. Not it goes thin a little bit, but that's interesting. I've never seen that. But it's gonna be loaded with sand and stuff. This would be a. I'd go at it with a Dremel or something at first or slice it up a little bit to see if something comes out of the middle. Yeah. I have to order my shoes from here, from the U.S. because in Australia, there's no less to see. And that's huge for me. Oh, my God. So I have to go to the girls. One last time, Sweet Opals. Check out their Instagram. If you're not good with the plus 61 phone numbers, they'll take care of you. Yeah, she has a YouTube. She does some of her parcels on YouTube. What it, YouTube, Instagram, what other socials you do? Oh, yeah, Facebook, pretty much Instagram. everywhere. Yeah, no TikTok though, right? And once again, what is the booth number? 44? 44? 44. Oh, 24. And we might. 44. Just look for the beautiful banner. This is the inlay. Nice material. That is insane material right there. Can you bring me a Coca-Cola? Look at look at the allergies. That is. That's sun flash, not broad flash, right? Because yes. this has a uh -huh. line to it. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So this is sun flash, meaning that the color right. shines across it when it's turned in one line or at one mm -hmm. angle. If the whole thing lights up as you turn it into the sun and back away, that's that's full sun flash. That's 
broad flash, full broad flash. Sun flashes like that, and broad flash, the whole thing lights up in the color. Mm -hmm. Inlay material they were talking about? Yes. Just as phenomenal as and colorful as the rest of their kids. And so, Dave, what I do with this stuff is I, I wet my finger, I stick one piece to it, finding which way the color is, and I literally just take it to the bottom of my 280 wheel and just touch it to rub the skin off, flip it over, touch it again, and that way I have nothing but pure opal. And then I lay those pieces in a dark tray and flip them over to find the brightest color. And then I turn them around to see which way it plays the best. And then I situate it for my inlay. So that way I put them all in there. So when the inlay is done, all the colors coming at your face at one time and not oh, broken up. Oh, nice. This is a specimen. Oh. So you have that bit. Nice little mm. sitting on black. Mm. And it goes around. Man, I wish Lighting Ridge was in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> For real. Man. Oh. That color bar is insane. It's thin, but it is bright. It's very bright. As you can, that camera's picking it up yeah. phenomenally. So a lot of folks, I don't know if people know, but so the opal color has a, it's directional in, in the respect that in this case, like I'm looking at the color shooting up at my face it's a certain brightness right now, but if I rub the top and I turn it this way, it could be brighter. So it could be brighter shining this way, or it could be brighter shining this way, or upside down. So they do have a different angle in which they're brighter. And that's what a cutter has to determine is, okay, is this, you know, like, is this one brighter that way? Or if I turned it over and cut it, is that color gonna be brighter? Sometimes you don't know and you cut the wrong way. That's just part of being a cutter. But this has got a gorgeous color bar. It's thin, but I'm gonna tell you that's gonna pop. Sitting on black, this stone is gonna be a gorgeous stone. And I bet you you can get a lot of that stone uninterrupted with uh, any sand. That's that's beautiful. Something that I wanted to add to the video is with parcels, with the small pieces, like we have this one, it's 230 carats, $550. Or this one, you know? You can cut stones like these sizes, but look at the prices that the stones go for. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. See, there is always money in them. There is. And the jewelers, the jeweler, you know, the designers, they are always chasing this type of parcels. That is what we sell the most to the jewelry designers. Because they want, they want complement stones to yes. go around. Not yes. just one giant center stone, they want complement stones. And also, they use it for small pieces, like the rings that I make. Oh yeah, little petites you know? and stuff, mm -hmm. yeah. Very petit, they dainty. They are very significant at the same time. But then again, you don't want the ring to overpower yeah. the stone, uh -huh. right? You want it to complement yeah, the stone. Yeah, exactly. You're a great designer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dad. I love my color. My mom bought a black opal ring from her last year. Oh, yeah. she, loved it. she loved it. She loved it. Like a little one with red from these little parcels. But there is always so money bright. to be made everywhere. This one. So your mom is going to clean it. Cute. Yeah, oh, she. Um, no, oh, she's here. Yeah. Well, oh, well, so uh, does this she, show she lived in Green Valley, which when? is about when? 35, like, 40 minutes. When is finished? Uh, the so 11th? Um, I stay with no, her. So my my difficulty is I got to travel about in and out. Perfect. But I got a free house and a free car. Everything. I mean, yeah, that's. That's amazing. Yeah. And obviously, international shipping is no problem for you. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely not. And you know, from Australia, is very inexpensive to ship. You know. We're talking about like nineteen dollars to send to America, and it takes just like over ten days. And if we want to send express, it's twenty-five dollars, and it takes one week. You see how bright that little little piece is. Mm. Hi, who are you? What What would an estimate uh, a jeweler would pay for um, for a little piece like that? 
with the reds in it and like that on black. This little piece, as a wholesaler, I sell that in $100. Wow. Australian dollars. Mm -hmm. You see? So about 70 US. Yes, about 70 US. Do you all see how small that is? I mean, that's next to my fingernail. We're talking, and that is about five millimeters, you think? About I five would be like three and a half. Three and a half. Uh -huh. and I have like a couple of jewelers in Australia that they only buy pointers. And all the jewelers, we call them pointers. Some people in the UK, they call them micro opals. Meaning it's under a kid. Uh -huh. So uh, if you notice, I just pulled this little piece <laughs> out of this inlay, and mm -hmm. you see her price. And she just said that one piece alone mm -hmm. would be wholesale for seventy US dollars to a, uh, you know, a jeweler. Yes. So you can you can make your money back on these obviously very easily. This is gorgeous material to, to use for inlays. Mm -hmm. um, or even little ringstones like she said i would try to get a ringstone out of it before i cut it up to stick it in something because it was more as a bigger piece than it is yes, smaller absolutely. smaller but i mean there's some jewelers i think it was sally was telling me that they have a demand for the small even smaller yes, than that yes and they demand x amount of numbers of them yes. and she sets her price on it and she sells them as fast as she can get them yeah uh -huh. we have orders all year round from three and a half millimeter up to just seven by five and it's all year all year all year we have these jewelers i mean this is a super juicy juicy bag for 1800 i mean so crazy juicy mm -hmm. what do you expect from the queen of opal that's right that's right <laughs> that is you. right you're very cute, guys. Thank you. Thank you, for your time. No, thank thank you. you so much for coming. And uh, one last time. The booth number, CP44. And I have a card right here. And, of course, please. Oh, yo. I'll get it when he come back because the other one melted. I had to put it in the fridge, but yeah. I ate it the other night. <laughs> I'll take mine right now. Yeah, thank absolutely. You, thank you so much. You know what Elizabeth gave me? The Vegemite. Yeah. I, I did it. I went home, made a piece of toast, put some butter but, on it, and yeah. then spread it on there. A little bit. Only I very did. thin. And um, I, I told her, uh, it, it was Australia. Australia. Oh, I had no idea. Australia. It wasn't bad. Through white food. No, you it know what? You just... It's better than vegetables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't eat them. It's not for me. It's so not for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Some people put it in the stock in the skills. They put vegetables. Yeah. Mm. I don't know because they love that strong taste, but I love vegetables. I can't eat vegetables. I learned to fall in love with vegetables. Toast, butter, very thin layer of Vegemite and mozzarella. Melt the mozzarella. Oh, divine! Thank you so much. <laughs> Enjoy, Dave. All right, Dave. We're over here with Elizabeth Lloyd with Desert Jewels. She has some beautiful, beautiful material. This is the top-notch material uh, as far as crystal opal and opal color goes. You're going to see huge, huge colors here in a moment. Um, this is her first year here in Tucson. Oh, wow. And um, this is her, her socials, uh, not socials, her Facebook, Instagram. And then she is CP123 in the big tent over in Pueblo. So she's not in the magazine. She got in a little bit late this year, so she didn't actually get to be published in it. And then she's not even in the directory. So we're gonna help her out a little bit and point everybody her direction. Mm -hmm. um, you're gonna come back again another year again, right? You like it so far? Nice. Wait, I can see her year after year. We're gonna get the video out tonight. So yes. it'll be good. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, she has some, this is all of her jewelry. She made herself. Oh, you're, you're not just the designer, you're the, the jeweler. I am. Fantastic. Yeah, open cutter as well. Where do you get the time? Well, I, <laughs> Passion. I manage, I definitely manage. Oh my goodness. Those are some gorgeous opals, aren't they? Yeah. You see the shells? Um, I'm a little ignorant when it comes to shells. Oh, that's right. So, um, 
these are the shells? These are seashells. So basically they're opal replacement. So over millions of years, you know, all of the calcium and what have you in the shell itself eventually gets replaced with opal. For some reason, when it comes to opal shells, you might pull that up so we could see it. Sure. The glass is giving a little bit of a flat, uh, reflection. Yep. Um, for some reason, when opal um, replacement forms in shells, it forms very dense, bright colors. And you'll see there's actually a little bit of curvature on there. You can see the original shell, but it very, very bright colors. And there's a little bit of a rule of thumb with shells. So with shells like this one, you can actually still see the ridges of the shell, of the original shell. If you can polish it up and leave all the original identifying marks of the shell intact, it actually is worth more because it's an actual fossil and on top of it, it's an opal replacement fossil, which is very rare. I mean, you're talking what, minimum 20 million years for this mm, replacement or something? Correct. I mean, that's a very long time. Um, but then there are some cases where no matter what you do with this, nobody's gonna really know it's a shell. In that case, you can go ahead and cut it and make something out of it and make good money off of it. Is the, is the maintaining um, shape and figure of opal shells a more modern thing? Back in the day, did you just wipe that out for pure color? Uh, even today, you can get a shell and you can decide whether to leave it in its natural formation or you can cut it, slice it, you can do inlay with it, you can do this particular one, you can do perhaps two or three cab stones out of a size like that. And so you can make a pair of earrings and a matching ring. And, or as I said, you can leave it as a natural formation. But some of these lend themselves to cab stones and these are high-end shells. Not all of them that we carry are high-end. And a lot of people are uh, just wanting um, something with no color, just so they can have a collector's fossil. And we do have them uh, in the showcase as well today. So look at this one, it still has the butt joint of the shell. Oh that was, yeah, sure that, that is, um, that'd be a muscle, right? That's a muscle yeah, shell. Yeah, certainly. So and so yeah. you still have the joint right there, and then you have the, the actual striations of the shell itself right there. So this one, I mean, if it, if it was more intact, it, you would really have some serious money in there, but this sure. still would, because of the color and all that that's in there, that would still be worth a good amount of money. So these ones in this, this tray, these are intact, and these are, um, this is a muscle as well. So we're selling these whole, but you can actually see that that's quite thick, and you can get away with doing a nice cab stone on that, and that's a high-end piece. Um, it's, it's just an absolute beautiful um, create, creation of nature. And then we have fossils. This is a gastropod, and that's a colorful gastropod. And that's whole, and that's you can see that you still have sandstone in there coming through the bottom of that gastropod. And then we have something exactly the same, but no color. And people will buy them just to, just to own a, a gastropod and have a collector's piece. Mm -hmm. It's quite spectacular. This one is whole, whereas if you pan back to this tray here, these ones are, you know, they've been found in the ground that are broken up, but still very highly collectible. That's a mussel. Yeah. And that has a really beautiful bar of blue-green going through the center of that stone. And this a blue green right there so this one you know the ridge is already worn off and it does have the butt which does give you the shape and look of the you know the clam and this one looks like a clam right there wouldn't be a yeah, muscle right most definitely. and so you know this one me personally i'd probably just just shine it up and leave it alone and not try to really destroy it but it depends on what your purpose is for it you could easily uh, shine it up without cutting it up and put it in a drawer if you're into the fossil True. Yeah. And then this, I bought the other bigger one. This is an opal pineapple. Oh, this is where you got your pineapple? Yes, sir. Oh, yes, goodness. sir. This has got gorgeous. You see the reds and all that. So normally, they are much. They can come much bigger. Or they come this small. Kind of, this one looks kind of like a pine cone, but it is a, uh, a pineapple. And so it just forms all these nodules. And her example of pineapple is a very nice one because of the color. And so in order to keep it intact and not damage it when you're trying to clean it, um, they highly recommend if you can get a hold of a, um, uh, a baking soda blaster, but if not, um, Elizabeth has a good idea. You were talking about taking a brush. Will yeah, you explain um, it? Yeah, you would take this and get a little 
bristle brush that you can use on your Dremel and then slowly get into all of the crevices very slowly and patiently and remove all the dirt and sandstone out of there. If you leave it immersed in water, you might loosen up a little bit of that, that dirt as well. So, but I'd do that patiently and spend some time and you'd really make the colors stand out if you took away the sandstone in between. So they, with these um, pineapples, they, the guy that actually mines them, uh, that the only source of them right now is around the corner, he hasn't found any in some time and they're not renewing his leases. So he said basically the pineapples that have come out the earth is all there's going to be. And there wasn't a bunch of them. And so they're going to be, they're ultra rare and you probably won't see any more again because they're going to go in collections and museums and there's already some in museums. So I would come over and snatch this one up from her right away if you can. I mean, honestly, this is, and how much are we asking for this? If you don't mind me asking? 850 US dollars. That's it? Yeah. Oh, this man. is a, a I was, steal. I feel... <laughs> a steal. Exactly. So a we're, steal. We're wholesalers, so everything we have in our showcase today, including our high end rough opal and our commercial opal, are all wholesale prices. Holy right. smokes. So that's not, I bought the other one, like I said, it's not going to last long. I'd recommend getting down here and getting as that. As soon as you got here, too. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. I'm like, I'm not leaving this to booth until I come back and <laughs> you get came it. Back. I did. You I was did. like, I, I, that's one thing I could not pass up. <laughs> Can I trouble you to hold that one for me? It has yeah. a, some spectacular it teal. It is so, so beautiful. That's a bellamite. Yeah. So this is a bellamite. And I have a whole one here, which is quite amazing. And I'll get Madeline to, to yeah, hold that. Yeah, I was going to say, that, that one, two hands, two hands. Yeah. <laughs> so that one is 72 carats and is from Kibipiti, from a, an opal field called 23 Mile. And 23 Mile is renowned for its beautiful stable material. And we have a lot of 23 Mile in uh, seam opal, ready for cabbing or for inlaying. And a bellamite is a uh, prehistoric squid? That's correct. Squid. Squid tentacle. Squid tentacle. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. to give you an idea how big it is. So that, is that just part of a tentacle that broke off? That's exactly right. I don't want to really hold that. I don't know why I said the other hand that's in. I don't want to hold it. Now, if you look at the inside of that, you can see the formation, the natural formation that was left. And the outer shell was polished just to bring out the colors. And it's a whole whole formation. So they could dig around the whole mine and not find any more. This could be the only one that, that cast a shell for it to fill with silica and water and create the tentacle. This, yeah, because there's plenty that are just this plain. The smaller one, which is a broken part of it, yep. also is a um, part of a, a squid tentacle and has just magical reds and multicolour in that stone. So this this one here, and I'll just say that it's we're selling this at $9,000 US and it's an investment piece. So you can buy this and keep it as an investment piece because they don't come whole like this. They normally come in sections. And we have a couple in this tray over here, Dave, that are, Madeline, I'll give that to you, that are actually sections of a bellamite, and it goes this way. And that's how that was found in the ground. So that's also quite collectible as well. We have some with full color. And then we also have uh, a few in the tray, Dave, that are broken pieces of squid tentacle as well. And some of these were came out of the ground with a noodling machine. And this could have been a part that the um, original miners left behind and it was noodled with a noodling machine. And so there are no more sections um, from this one. This is also um, a bellamite, but it's quite thick. It's a lot thicker. And this obviously was a larger bellamite. And we have the second part to it here. That is stunning. Yeah. Can I try you to pick up this one? Sure. Madeline, I'll get you to pick that up if you like that. Oh, you got the, the nails. <laughs> they don't just look good, it's a tool. Yeah, that's a beautiful, what we call a milky, milky pink opal. It's got stunning reds going through there. 
and these are available. We're here till the 6th of February here in the Pablo um, Gem and Mineral Show. So booth number 123. 123. 123 it is. Easy to remember. Oh yeah. <laughs> awesome. Just in that day, but as we move over here, we're going to start looking at some just top-notch crystal opal. But if you're trying to buy crystal for setting a beautiful, you know, piece of jewelry or make something gorgeous out of it, this is already gem quality right here before it's cut. Um, this is hard stuff to get your hands on. This doesn't come out of the ground in giant handfuls because otherwise if they did that, miner would be ultra rich right now. Mm -hmm. But this is after it's been sorted and gone through and, and graded. Mm -hmm. And um, if you mind pulling out a couple trays and I can show them, but this is, this is absolute exquisite material. Every inch of it will cut into a gem. And if you were to, you know, like for example, if we were gonna cut, this one into an oval you would not want to grind it into an oval you would want to trim saw it so that you can reuse the other pieces because this is so gorgeous i mean the material is absolutely stunning on this material you collect every single chip and eventually Everything. you'll have a big inlay parcel perhaps you absolutely would um so this at 200 a gram works out to about 40 dollars per carat and that is about the going rate for high-end gem quality rough with no wastage, meaning there's a tiny bit of skin on here, but that's all the wastage. All the rest is opal. Where a lot of like black with the potch, even though you want to keep some of it for color, you're removing a lot, so you're paying for that. Right. And you might save some for doublets, but there's just some sheer waste in that where there's not in this. Right. And I found, you know, the only reason having a backing on a crystal opal is if the opal is not thick enough and needed some backing that to, you know, to give it some thickness. Um, in this case, like actually getting crystal to go all the way through, um, it would be just so incredibly bright. I leave the back rubbed at a, what, 280? 280, 280, so it's really hazed and it gives something for the color to bounce back off of. Otherwise, it gets translucent. And let me see if you can see like that one. You can see my finger through it. See that? Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's actually a shell, ironically. I can see yeah. the ridges. But if you rub the back rough, it actually helps the color pop a little bit better. Um, crystal opal set on top of black potch will make the, crystal, the color pop even more, but it becomes a doublet at that point. So you got a little devalue, you know, because of that. But this material, we would have no problem. Look at the thickness of that color bar. You would have no color make, so problem making huge cabs out of this. Yeah, 100%. Um, so so is, that was 200 That's 200 gram. a gram. And this is from 14 mile in Kibbapiti. This is and from uh, 23 mile in, in Kibbapiti. And this is 78. This is 78 a gram. And I mean, that's, that is, outrageous that's that's a b5 for those that know your brightnesses that's a b5 in, in brightness right then and there that's the way it's going to face you can do vertical cuts you can you can don't you know you can actually um dome it like that if you want it um you do notice that, that this is goes from crystal to white so me personally i probably wouldn't dome the whole thing because this is a different you know opal type than this i mean the same type but they're different colors this is a white this is a crystal crystal is more valuable than white so me i'd probably separate them and do something there um, if you want to do smaller stones, you could cut down on top of those, but you notice how thin it is. But you get down here, it's got some thickness if you wanted to dome it and get that whole thing in there. But that's, you can actually slice this up and do a lot of things with this. I mean, a lot. And it's all the way through. And it's got a little bit of skin, but you almost can see the color right through that. And see, this is, this is as rough as you get coming out the ground. The edge exactly. would be slightly snipped to show the miner what he has because no miner's gonna just hand over handfuls of rough that's not cleaned for a set price without knowing what's in it because they could potentially hand away a $100,000 stone and not know it. So they're not dumb. They're gonna try to find, see what they have. But this is about as in the rough as you get. You notice it's got skin all the way around. Nobody rubbed it with any wheels, but the color is so bright, it's coming through the skin and it shows you it's called skin to skin color. There's no wastage on this you see what you get and you're going to know what you're going to cut there's no sand i can see that would be a, a, an intrusion in your color at all 
Um, Lightning Ridge tends to have like I call sand pillars and pits. So in the middle of the color bar is this sand pillar that comes up from the bottom that you can't see. And all of a sudden in the middle of your stone is the sand inclusion you have to cut out. Mm -hmm. Now your stone is half the size you started, you know? This stuff, no waste, hence the price. Okay, and I'll just, just do a correction on that. That's 78 a carat, per carat. Oh, per carat? Yes. Oh yeah, so you look at the total one, yeah. 78 a carat, yeah, just, okay. Just to be correct on that one. Yes, ma'am. And this one here, um, this is um, material from Cubipedia as well. It's from a different field. So this is from 17 mile. And I have um, made a piece out of that particular parcel, so you can see what it actually finishes like. So this, this is, is her a, work, absolutely beautiful. This is a custom-made piece from that parcel, and there's only um, one. It's definitely a one of a kind, Argyle diamonds, and it's all Australian. Fabulous! Your work is so just perfect. Thank you. Oh, it is. I mean, if you look at just the way her metal's wrapped around the stone, there's no gaps, there's no slop. It's not like they just stuck it into something that would fit. It, every piece is very meticulously set. She is a beautiful jeweler. It's not just simply fabricated. It's design, intention, direction. It's, yeah, we, yeah, we start with the stone and work around the stone in design. This is That's that's an heirloom for yeah, somebody's family for, stunning. for the rest of his life. It's an antiques road show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Done. So if you hold it from the side, you can actually see how magical that color, the color patterns are. So you've got oranges and hues of red, and this particular stone has got is quite thick. So you can do, you can slice this and do cabs, or you can slice it for inlays. Um, but definitely investment material. You don't find it as big. Um, mm -hmm. like these sizes and they lend themselves also to carving so you yep. can do some beautiful carving on these these slabs and like I say they generally come in smaller pieces so using that as an example of how it's going to turn out and, and you're definitely going to get your money's worth if you're making pieces like that you could perhaps make 10 or 15 of these designer pieces from this parcel and I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you hear the sound these make? Oh, yeah. Right? So it's a glassy sound, it's a right? Glass. So when you're cutting them on your wheels and you're going through first this here, right? That makes a different sound. But the minute your wheels touch that opal, it will make a total different. It's just a, it's like you're cutting glass. And obviously you just barely hear it. And if you're keen to that sound, you'll know, wait a minute, I'm on the color. I'm hitting opal. So... It's very, very solid. Material. And it, it should sound like that. It shouldn't sound, you know, hollow it's or... It's echoing through yeah, It is. So. It, it's, it sounds like you're just really, really cool. I don't think I've ever seen crystal this good in my life. No, this is this is your this is your top stop. I am. Definitely. Some of my, you know, yeah. So top stop. I mean, I just, I keep picking up that piece because I love the reds and yellows. And that is just look at look at it on fire in the camera. I mean, that's insane. And you can see it underneath the skin right there. That one is going to cut a really nice, decent stone. Really nice. And you're talking. I think you're going to get close to. You're probably almost in the two what two thousand dollars a carat range finished, right? Most definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Quite easily. So, so not double your money. Not five times your money. At least ten times your money. Mm. But. But you gotta play ball, baby. You gotta right. Well, <laughs> and then the pricing with with opals now. If you get over a ten carat opal, the value goes up because to get a, a, a pure cut opal over ten carats, no inclusions and all that stuff, it gets more rare the bigger you get. So the price goes up accordingly. So a big stone like this is going to be really nice. Um, yeah, you're gonna kill it. Thanks for watching. You're gonna kill it. I appreciate uh, it. Nice to meet you. I I'm so blessed to. You have something very special there in your hand. I'm so excited to see. <laughs> I'm just about to weigh it up so I get it accurate. I don't like to. In the meantime, if you don't mind, I'll take a look at some you of your go ahead. stunning jewelry. It's just perfect. Do you mind if I see the back? Sure, sure, you're welcome to. That was actually made or created from a opal fossil. Oh wow. 
so it's just quite bright and the same as this one as well, Dave. This is made by an open person and it's 6.10 carats. It's a classic design, 14 carat yellow gold. And it's open on the back so you can uh, see what it looks like from the back as well. And you can see I've left the back side of the uh, fossil um, just to show people that it's made from a, um, a fossil. Or, or, and it's so bright. Some of the designs look a little familiar or similar, but um, that's this design with a red opal. And that's this design with a high dome uh, shell. Are you buying, John? <laughs> I'm always buying. <laughs> so these are, this is kind of pretty good pricing as well. Yeah, I remember this. That one, um, that's your white. Yeah, that's going to be more of your white uh, body tone, right? That's right. Yeah. Your white body tone. And this is the white body tone as well. This is commercial material. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, now so now it's about being right. And yeah. you're like. Oh. Do you think you'll start to goldsmith yourself? Medium. Yeah. Possibly. Yeah. It's a little intimidating at first. It is. Expectations. She's so perfect. I know. She's very good. She's been doing it 25 years. That's amazing. I do strive for perfection. I try my best. So these she's referring to as the commercial grade, and I'm going to show you a comparison. So if I grab one with the color bar sticking out the side. And you can see the color in there and how bright it is compared to if I take this and put it side by side, there's an obvious winner between the two and how bright it is in its rough state. Commercial, gem grade. So it's just, and that could come into about a, a B3, maybe some B4s out of there, but this is all day long B5 material. Brightness of five. So you can see the difference right there. And as we just saw at Sandra's, um, you know, she has that potching color. So when she's referring to commercial, this is a little bit better than potching color because it has color, but this would be the equivalent of her potching color, Lightning Ridge. And this is her, her potching color, um, Cooper Petey. I say her, Sandra's Lightning Ridge, Elizabeth's Cooper Petey. So here's the blues, just like um, Lightning Ridge, but Without the black on the back, the light blues like this don't pop as strong without that black. But it doesn't mean you couldn't put black potch on the back of this or something black to make it pop more when you get done facing it. You could, um, but you don't know until you rub the skin off and what kind of color you have or whether or not you're gonna need a, a backing of something to make it brighter. And so this material is, oops, shoot. No, you're right. 45 carats, 1200. Yep. And 110 grams. And then she has the, these are actually beautiful, beautiful pieces. There's some ring zone, little, little pointers, so under a carat cutters, but some also some beautiful inlay material. You can do quite a bit with every piece in here. It looks like it, from so far, it looks like every piece has color. And that's ideal. A lot of times when they're selling small chips like this, it includes a bunch of solid um, like potch that, that you can't do anything with. And so having color in every piece makes it worth its value. So 71 grams for 600. And she is a wholesaler, so she will work with you a little bit on all the prices. So it isn't stuck in stone what <laughs> I made a fine. <laughs> anyway, um, but see what I'm saying? 333, 332 carats at 1200, but you'll see there's a little bit more wastage in here. You have a little bit more potch attached and there's a little bit more work to get into there and the price is according. So these are all pre-sorted and priced accordingly. 43.17 grams, 900. And this has got some juicy material, a little bit more of a white body tone right there. That's your common through Cooper PD. Oh, look at that. That's your, probably one of the Kingstones. Look at that thing. Oh. That is gorgeous. How much for just that one stone? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I just want the best one out of the parcel. You have to buy. Nice try, John. <laughs> yeah. 
Doesn't hurt to ask. There's not a bad one in there. It's so amazing. No, and then this has got your more of your fossils, some super bright jemmy uh, crystal, um, smaller little parcels you can see. Uh, what, 10.6 uh, grams, 60 carats, that's a thousand. Really not bad. And you can see the you can see the shape of this the, the shell still right there intact. So it'd make beautiful, you just clean up the edges, a little polish, and then you could set it and let it just dangle on a necklace or something. Heck yeah. Which yeah, so Alyssa was referring to this as being commercial. Um, for those here in the U.S., just so we know we're clear, um, I know the word commercial has been used, meaning like I've heard a lot of people refer to just potch as being commercial. I mean, it's the most available thing that comes out the ground. Um, she's referring to the most common with color being mm -hmm. commercial. Yes. Um, this is like your starting grade of color coming out of Cooper Pedy. Um, if you'll notice here, the sand... Cooper Pedia, that, that sand's actually dipping down in there and it kind of undulates as it goes through the stone. So to get, you notice that you'll have a stone there, but if you'll notice it kind of dips down in there. So there's a chance that, I mean, you could polish this, I guess, with a Dremel and expose all the color, but if you want to get cabs and domes, like you would have a stone here, you would probably have a stone here, and I would trim saw it. I wouldn't go and grind it away because every time you grind it, you're dumping opal down the drain. Um, I mean, this is still really exquisite, exquisite Cooper Beatty. Um, it has crystal bars running through it. This is really, really nice stuff. And she says commercial, I'm gonna tell you, it's not very common. You'll see this stateside without a huge price tag with it. Mm. And this is a hundred per gram on this commercial. As you can tell, the difference between the others that we were talking about was mm -hmm. uh, 200 per gram. Are these two different parcels? Yes. I am. Damn. So this parcel here of all that white, let me get that out. So that's 320 carats, 60 grams, and 6,000 for the parcel. And then this one here, which is, this is more of a shell patch, lots of shell in there, super, super bright. Um, 39 grams, 209 carats, 2,500. This would lend itself to um, inlay, inlay material. So you can see some of this is quite thin, but thick enough once you take the skin off the back uh, to inlay and will come out quite bright. And then we also have this, which is um, inlay material. That looks like it's already been cleaned. It, it looks has. like it's already been cleaned up and, so and shaped kind of right. It's stunning. It's, it's it's had all the dirt taken off of it, and so that's ready to to use this material. You just got to shape little pieces for your mm. inlay. That that's that's ready to go. That's that, that 100 percent worth every every microgram of that is mm. already ready to go to set. So that's, I believe this is four. That's 400. 400. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm. So again, wholesale prices. And look at that, that, that is a bag of pure color. Not, not many people mm -hmm. will take the time to sort out small pieces like this to give you a full bag of color. I mean, usually they're like, oh, that's close enough. You just grab the handful of the all pots and everything out and throw it all together and call it, you know, pieces. This is all, every single piece has color in that, pre-sorted. That's still the same grade. That right there, between these two, you'll have your inlay materials for quite a few pieces. Mm -hmm. You'll be working it quite a while. What is, um, so on your car, is the best way to contact you through Facebook or Instagram? It certainly is. Or we, you can also um, DM us, DM, um, or this is our car. We're in, located in Australia. We don't have a store. We're wholesalers. We just have a workshop. So if you have a need for something in particular, you're welcome to email or contact us through Facebook. 
we monitor our Facebook and Instagram daily. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. A lot of people are kind of taking a break from that right now because the show is so crazy, so it's really nice that you folks can get to your customers at a reasonable time. Uh, we are. Uh, and so overnight in Australia, we're getting messages, and we, we get to them first thing in the morning before we come into the show. So we have some really beautiful stones here as well. So these are, this one here is um, 23 mile and that's um, six and a half carats and that's a thousand dollars a carat. Hence the reason why. Look at the color that's in there. I mean, it's just so explosive. Oh yeah. That's our nicest piece at the moment. There's a lot of other vendors here selling opal, but when people come to Tucson, this is what they want to see. This yeah. is the top of the top. Because exactly. we've just, that's all we have here is the opals. And and honestly, when you come in person and hold top grade color and opal it'll give you a better perspective on if you're an opal butter of what your material is like and whether or not you're grading it right as far as brightness goes and all that stuff so it really really gives you a good comparison there's nothing better I think. so john are you familiar with cupipedi matrix no. so this is treated this is a um, cupipedi matrix it's actually treated with uh, sulfuric acid and sugar and usually it's found in a dull white colour and then they treat it so it goes dark in, in base colour. So this is kind of like a byproduct. Of, I thought it all uh, came in Andamuka. Oh, I'm sorry, Andamuka. Okay, you I'm like so Cooper PD Matrix. I'm like, that's new, I never knew. But you, do, you can find Matrix in Cooper PD, but really? this, this one is Andamuka. And this is a treated stone. And if you turn it over, you have colours on both sides. So that's more of a red orange. And then if you turn it over, you've got greens. Oh wow. And it isn't ex as um, expensive as your crystal opals. So, and there's a lot found. That's a very small one. Usually they come in really big sizes. You know, I was. Out of all the opal variations from Australia, that was kind of like my least favorite. But once I saw um, Riley Gunn go over the explanation of, of cutting it and treating it and stuff like that, and then see what it produces, I started kind of liking it almost equally. Now, of course, yeah. I love my certain colors and variants more than others, but um, if they're bright enough, because a lot of them I've seen were kind of dull and barely show color, yeah. um, I didn't realize they could become highly valuable also as much they as They have others. become valuable over the years. Um, um, so, John, I'm sure most of the people who watch understand the treatment to Anamuka, but there's a lot of uh, teachers that show their younger students these videos yeah. around America. It's not like turquoise when you're sucking it full of a color. No. It's that color is from Mother Earth. They just brought it out. Yeah, the so the opals in, in the matrix, okay, in order to get the color to pop out, they absorb sugar, sugar water, basically. You can do it with brown sugar, other sugars, uh, Coca-Cola. Uh, Coca-Cola. Yeah, so you heat it up and then you soak it in the, not hot but just enough to dry out the stone and so it opens the pores you soak it in either like i said brown sugar solution or coca-cola let it soak all that up and you can either bake it off to turn the sugars black or you could use um acid to actually etch the, the make the you know burn the sugar it's a permanent treatment it'll never come off you can't wash it out it's literally just turning the innards black and making the color pop the color is there you're not adding it, you're not doing any of that, it's there. It's just beginning it to come out. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for the explanation, because there's some people out there who might be thinking, how did they die? Well, oh, it's not yeah. died. It is a permanent, there's no way to undo that. Once it's like that, there's no one doing it. Now, I've also heard if you have a piece, and this would probably most likely happen with more affordable, everyday in Namuka, nothing like this amazing piece, and they treat it to show color, but it's still rough. When you cut it, sometimes you do retreat it after yes. you cut it. And uh, I think I hear people using like crock pots and sugar and an acid in their backyard. So it's like. Yeah, so the crock pot, all they're doing is just heating up that sugar solution 
and then soaking all the stones in it for many hours just so it soaks all that sugar into the stone and then again you could do them in the oven um i mean riley was doing videos where he was doing big chunks of it and the problem is is that a when he did it in the oven his process where was where he would have had a i don't know it was like a 60 percent success rate the rock would stay intact after he got it out of the oven but a lot of times it would fall apart on him and then the center would be untreated because the sugar couldn't get to the middle so a lot of people are starting to cut their shapes and then treat them after the fact so that it brings out the colors permanently oh, wow. very correct. i think to just to um stop the waste you would be shaping your stone and then treating it because most of the time it only treats a millimeter deep when you do cook it in the sugar and then take it to the um sulfuric acid Fantastic. So, and that way it won't shatter. If you put it in the oven, the chances are definitely that they're going to shatter. Right. But so slow boiling in the sugar and, and acid um, is probably the safest way to go. So if anybody wants, it doesn't doesn't want to do the acid treatment and they want to play around with that stuff the, the oven method i would recommend you go look at riley gunn's youtube video so he has a very specific process of slowly heating up the stone in the oven so it starts low and it sits there for about an hour then he goes up like 10 more degrees and it does it for another hour and he does it all the way up to a certain temperature and then when um, he turns off the oven lets the stove stone naturally cool off and then puts it in sand and it does all that to protect it from breaking up and cracking and so because acid obviously is something you got to be very careful handling not only because you don't want to breathe it touch it all that stuff that's an alternative method to actually curing it without having to do the acid but the acid's quicker you can you know but it's dangerous using the acid and i would recommend definitely doing all of that process outside yes yes uh you know unless you want your oven to taste permanently like <laughs> and Amuka, then go ahead and do some in your oven. Just <laughs> gonna do any uh, Inland's kitchen before, right? before we make pizza. Or something. Yeah, you would have yeah. some earthy tasting stuff after that. <laughs> do you want to talk about some doublets as well, John? So doublets are more man-made. Yes, ma'am. So, so, whenever you're cutting thin, thin color bars, it's best to see it by its side. You know. Sometimes you're going to get a big sheet of a thin color bar and you're like, what do I do with it? I can't set it by itself because it's not thick enough. So you can take solid black potch, this in case she has ironstone on the back mm -hmm. here. And you can basically use it as a backing and take that thin bar and set it on there. I recommend, my rule of thumb is if I have a color bar, it's a millimeter after it's finished. It's a millimeter or less. I need to have a backing on it. I need to dub, make a doublet. Um, so yeah, you can see it gives it more thickness and it actually gives strength to the opal. Um, and on top of that, the darker matrix on the back helps this crystal opal pop with colors. And this is an absolute exquisite little heart. And it's beautiful. That's actually a lightning rich uh, doublet. Lightning the rich stone doublet. itself is, is from lightning rich. Okay. And these ones are from Cuba Peel. All right. And so um, generally a doublet is about the value of a doublet is about 60% of a natural whole stone and a triplet goes down to almost 30 to 20% of the whole stone. And that's just because it could be a super fine layer of opal only and then the top is glass and then the bottom is some other, you know, matrix. So you don't want to pay, you know, solid opal prices for something that's, you know, like less than 10% yes, that's right. opal. So I, I've not done triplets because I prefer just to keep it as, at the doublet only, and I stop there. Um, I just don't feel I want to put in all that time to only get 20 or 30% of the value. So I just don't go there. That's right. And as you can see, the price is according. She's got that. This is spot on the price. I mean, that is spot on right there. And like she said, prices are negotiable. So if you come and buy several things, I'm willing to bet that she can work with you. I'm not going to speak for her, but yeah, if, I, I've learned over the years if you're going to negotiate, don't try to buy one ten dollar rock. You know what I mean? <laughs> can I have that for five, please? Yeah, for nine dollars and eighty cents. Exactly. Know. So with her being a jeweler and stuff, she's already shaped the edges. I don't know if you can see the... Yeah, the girdle's phenomenal. Yeah. So she's already prepped it for the way she likes to see it, which is very smart. I've seen folks do straight girdles, you know, undulating backs, and I'm like, yeah, somebody will set it, but it's going to be a lot of work and cost you money. And it will possibly chip, so... Right. Um, yeah, putting it in the oven, it's not 
having a finish on it is ready for uh, setting, setting into jewelry. That is a very, very fair price for the brightness of that stone. And honestly, hers are thick enough where, I mean, some of these double are thick enough, I would almost, I would have done it, left it by itself. But I mean, this is a way to make it strong. I mean, you can't carry that around without it breaking, but it is thick enough that if you were to do a solid back and set it inside of something, I guess you could keep it. Mm -hmm. um, but this plays well together right here. And that price is very, very, very affordable and attractive in my opinion. And here's a couple more examples. Uber Pitties. Yeah, this one's got some different kind of color pattern to it. Very bright. A little sun flash to it. Is this one a double as well? Yes, That's these are all double. And it's got a, a macro front pad. So you, you like the ironstone backings, don't you? Uh, I, I use both. I use the onyx or the jet and also the ironstone. Oh, you use onyx. So you don't yeah. use black potch. I, I, I haven't in the past. But I actually have a large amount of black potch. Yes, you do. I do. I have quite a bit of black potch, which we brought along to Tucson. And these are for the cutters and hobbyists. And it's black potch from Minterbin. And it's a dollar a gram. Bigger pieces, it's all the same. So now, we have a, quite a few pieces of this, John. So the deal with this black potch is you see it's totally rough. There's nothing been cut with a machine or like that to expose it. In reality, she doesn't know what's in the middle of this any more than anybody else. It, it gives all indication it's pure black potch, but there is a very, very small chance mm -hmm. there could be a dot of color somewhere in there. And I've had that happen when yeah. I bought black potch, yeah. you know, but. And that's what it's like when you put a bit of water on it. And when you hit a polish with that, it'll turn just jet black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it would make a solid backing for a yeah. doubler. And you can get several backings out of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's actually pretty thick. Um, it just depends on Material. what you're doing. Yeah. So what I do, Dave, is I rub one side flat. I have one black potch flat all the time sitting by my, my cutter's bench. And when I have thin pieces, if I want to know what it's going to look like with a doublet, I just wet the black potch and drop the piece on there. And then I'm like, oh, I can see what it looks like. Oh, that doesn't look so good. So I don't commit to it and glue it and go, well, I don't like it now. Okay. So I just have it and I test it out. So my thin pieces, yeah, that looks good. No, that doesn't look good. Um, this stuff's great. She's here now. I would re recommend getting some. Otherwise, you got to pay all the shipping from Australia and all that to get any. So that's right. Come on, come down and visit I'm a, us. I'm a big fan keeping opal and opal together. So if there's any expansion, contraction, and stuff like that, that the are both the same material. If they don't contract or expand differently, that's my opinion. But I know they in Australia they've been backing stuff with all kinds of things for many years. That's so right. um, they know a little bit better than I do when it comes to that. You know, in the turquoise world, I see a lot of people using old records. Really? It's chopping up old Buster Beagle's bagpipe bugle banjo band and then flat lapping that because it's a nice dark color. Nice. Okay. <laughs> you would not probably want to do that <laughs> to these. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she has some good material. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Very welcome. Too. Thank you so much for thank coming you. down. And no, it's my honor and my pleasure. Really, it's such a pleasure to meet you. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. And if you need any help finding the booth, even though we have the um, information, which is CP123, uh, hit them up on Instagram or Facebook, and they'll tell you how to get there. Maybe they'll walk over there and meet you at the food court and bring you over. Thanks again for everything. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks hey. for spending the time with us. We really appreciate it. And um, hopefully we've been resourceful and uh, educational to... Oh, extremely. ...to your followers. Well, I mean, that's just cool. So the links to their contacts, their Instagram, Facebook, and everything will be down in the description section below, folks. Thanks again. Thank you so much. Here with John he the, Cook. <laughs> what's going on, guys? What were you about to say? Uh, Gene, just one of my favorite Oprah dealers, especially when it comes to Boulder, just because he's so upfront, so honest. There is no middleman. Gene literally goes out there, mines five months a year, cut, gets it out of the mine himself, cuts a little bit himself, then brings back some of his wares to sell, and including rough. Very honest, very straightforward. Uh, he's a good man to know. Very good man to know. Gene McDevitt? 
Detroit Opal 105 here at the GGX in Florida. Where in Florida, Gene? Clearwater. Clearwater, that's a beautiful place. I grew up in Fort Pierce. It's prettier now than it used to be. <laughs> I don't mind uh, the occasional hurricane warning. It is, uh, it is beautiful. Oh, I forgot about putting this one out. Nice. Oh, wow. Look, and he just did now, this. see, this is from Kuroid. Kuroid is known for the matrixy stuff, like this piece here that you have. That, I mean, Kuroid is better known for material like that. But Kuroid also produces sandstone boulder. And that's what this is, sandstone boulder, which comes from a level usually well above the main ironstone level. So, for clarification for everybody, um, will you tell us the definition of a nut? Because everybody says it's a Yawa nut, but I mean... <laughs> okay, well, Yawa... Yawa became better known before Kuroit did, and Yawa is uh, Yawa's larger. Yawa has things like plumbing and has running water, like that. <laughs> you know, things the, like that. So the, Yawa's better known. So these ironstone concretions, semi-spherical ironstone concretions, occur in Yawa, and they also occur in Kuroit. So if you find one in Yawa, you call it a Yawa nut. You find one in Kuroit, you call it a Kuroit nut. Who's better? Who's worse? And but they look the same, right? I mean, well, no, you know, oh, okay. that, that's okay. a fist fight right there. Okay, okay, sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> it, it, it's one of those things. In some cases, I can't tell. In other cases, it's very clear. So I, I mean, it seems that some smaller Yawa nuts, but this is rare. You'll, you'll find these small Yawa nuts with big crystal centers. You don't see that very much in Kuroi. That seems to be more common in Yawa. Okay. Um, but there's all. But in Kuroi, you'll find larger, real dark, dense ironstone. It shines that, up beautiful. Right? Yes, that I believe is more common in Kuroi than it is in Yawa. The, a lot of the Kuroi stuff tends to be less sandy than some of the material in Yawa. And I'm not rubbishing the Yawa stuff. It can be, <laughs> it, no, it can be like spectacularly beautiful. So some of it you can tell the difference, a lot of it you can't. So, oh, and it, it's called a nut. It's, it is not a fossil nut. It has nothing to do with a, like a walnut or anything like that. It's just a semi-spherical ironstone progression. And I, and I mean, some nuts, some nuts are flat like pancakes. Some nuts are like golf balls. But they have the sphere. And you kind of hit semi, yeah, you can see the semi, -con uh, uh, con some sort of concentric pattern to it. And then you will find, and that's what the conglomerate material is. Conglomerate material is a bunch of uh, ironstone that contains all these little nuts, sort of like raisins and raisin bread. Right. Right. See, like I said, that's yeah. a piece of sandstone boulder that came out of a comet in Kuroi. And that came out of a depth. Uh, and that's the that was, dry and wet. That was maybe 20 feet deep where the main ironstone level is about 45 feet deep. And in my mind, we pulled out, I mean, there's some sandstone boulders that are so big, they wouldn't fit in the excavator. Oh, no, I mean, these massive, but in my mind, there's this stack of these, these sandstone boulders like big bowling balls. However, do they have opal in them? No. <laughs> but do they look cool? I mean, they look like these massive cannonballs. Right. But very few of them have uh, But all you need is that one. You right, that exactly. One will make your entire season. So this is the, the bubble matrix I was talking to you guys about. Yeah, the, the other video in the live. And you'll see the color popping through all the little bubbles right there. And so, in color right there. So really, if you're, you know, detailed with dremeling, you could dremel out these bubbles like you do, um, you know, the, the fire agate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, a little bit and, of contour carving. Yeah. And, and Gene pointed out, though, sometimes the ironstone that's in it does not take a good polish. It's very dull. Um, and sometimes it, it does. So it's a, it's a hit or miss. But this is just, I love the patterns. And I like the, the look of it when it's all said and done. I mean, you can slice it and actually see it if you wanted to. And I'd probably trim saw it a little bit, you know, instead of just going to town, rubbing it all off just to see what's in it, you know what I mean? Gene, That's nice stuff. Um, do you ever use different final compounds for your boulder, or are you usually just using one? For polishing? Yes, final polishing. Okay, I'm one of those people who believes that you can always get a better polish. Oh, yeah. Always experimenting. If 
you've got an idea, please tell me and I'll try it. But I have found... This is more bubble. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're polishing full face stuff, tin oxide on rough leather works great. However, I have found when you're using, when you're trying to polish choroid stuff, well, part of the beauty of choroid stuff is the, is the weird patterns and the mixtures of different types of ironstone. The different types of ironstone have different densities, slightly different chemical properties. And I found whenever you use, try to use something like Lindia or tin or cerium oxide, one part of it will polish, another part will sort of orange peel, and then some others will, the particles will get stuck in, and it, it just, part of it will be good, part of it will be bad. What I do is I just polish on an 8,000 uh, Nova diamond wheel. And a lot of Australians have criticized me or they don't believe it, but I will tell you my secret right here since nobody is just between the two of us. <laughs> um, um, is I don't skip, make large skips in the in the grits of the wheel. So I go, you know, like 280, 600, 1200, 3000, 8000. But I swear to you, one of my keys is to spend more time than you think is necessary on the 3,000 grit wheel. Really? Because so I, I'm a phosphate guy. 3,000 in my mind, I'm like as fast as I touch it to the wheel, I'm done. So with you and your experience, which obviously shows because you have some of the best here, otherwise John Cook would be somewhere else. <laughs> it's true. Spend more time on 3,000. It's actually working. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of different hardnesses inside of the. Right, but you, you spend t you spend time on the three thousand wheel, but you don't lean on it heavy. And it's important that the three thousand wheel and the eight thousand wheel are both well broken in. And you spend, and I'm not talking thirty minutes or anything like that. But like you said, a lot of if you, when you're cutting other types of stones, you're in and out of that three thousand wheel in what like thirty seconds. You know, yep. you really. I mean, if you're like when I'm doing quartzes or some other types of stones, you don't really need to spend long on that three thousand wheel. But when I'm doing choroid stuff. I mean, it might be a couple of minutes, and and kind of play with it, work it, and not shoving too hard. Particularly if the if the ironstone, if there's significant differences in the ironstone in that particular stone. Um, but a good prep on the three thousand wheel. Then you go to the eight thousand, and similarly, make sure that the eight thousand wheel is well broken in. And, and I've been able to get a good, consistent polish on the opal and also multiple different types of iron stone. In, you know, because in a, in a choroid stone, you can get a combination of beautiful opal and jet black, almost jet black iron stone together with lighter brown iron stones. Anyway, that combination, I find you can get a very nice finish. So are you one of those guys that buys a brand new Nova and starts truing it up right away, knocking those spikes off? Well... Well, well yep. you're, you're cutting other hard materials, so I, I imagine you might be breaking in some of those wheels on your chrysoprase and yes, your high-end yes, yes, root yes. tile. No, and that's like next to my machine, I have like a chunk of, of rotolated quartz. <laughs> and, and yes, definitely get the spikes off it. Definitely get the spikes off it and work it a bit with something hard, some agate, some jasper, some piece of rotolated quartz or something like that. Fantastic. And I mean, I'm a cheapskate too, don't get me wrong. Oh, I don't want to waste the wheel. But no, I do break it in, break it in a bit. That's fantastic. It's cool to hear uh, such a high-end opal cutter using Novas. I think we all know Justin uses Novas, but I talk to a lot of people at 22nd who really don't enjoy them. Some of them are using like 3M diamond belts on expandable drums. Some people are even using silicon carbide, which you would think is just kind of just obsolete. Uh, we yeah, were just that. talking about tin. You use tin. That's kind of like an old timer secret in America that's kind of being rediscovered. I guess for a while, Tin was, uh, cerium oxide was more expensive than tin, and right. now it's the other right. way around, I believe. Right. And then, and like when I do other stuff, when I do like rutilated quartz and chrysoprase, again, I've experimented because I always think you could get a better polish. But again, the, the tin oxide on rough leathers worked well for me. With, with, with one, like with rutilated quartz, I mean, in my humble opinion, when I'm polishing it, Work it slowly, get it warm. Not quite hot, but get it warm. But chrysoprase, you don't, you just barely, barely get it warm. You do not want chrysoprase to get hot when you're uh, polishing it because it'll, it'll, it'll cause it to the green to go white a mm -hmm. little bit. We're like jade. I dig in. It wants torque, heat. You know, you want to abuse it. So right. you don't do that. That's great information, man. You're brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 thank you. <laughs> 
No, I'm happy. To, I'm happy to share. I'm, I'm such a Paul. I'm such an abrasives nerd. I care about these things so much. <laughs> oh, of course you do. No, in these rocks, I dig them out of the ground. I mean, I put my blood, sweat, my blood, sweat, literal and blood. Tears. <laughs> I mean, literally blood and sweat and tears and my last dollar into this investing in a hole in the ground. So when I dig these rocks out and when I find them, I well, also I know how rare they are. I know the battle that goes into getting them. And so when something beautiful comes out of the ground, I don't want it wasted. I don't want it damaged. I want to do the best. I mean, Mother Nature went to all this trouble. Yes. I want to For do it justice. For millions of years to form it. Yeah, I used to say it took a couple million years to form. You, it deserves a couple more minutes of your patience, oh, yeah. time, intention, and direction. And anybody who's been mining knows it took a few million years to form. And one jackhammer, oops, yes, <laughs> oh, to man. kiss it goodbye. Or pickaxe, or, yes. you know, I, I see guys that are filming themselves down in the down in the hole you know digging out that opal right but i see them just they're like here's the opal and then they're taking this pick and they're like two inches above you like, whack whack and i'm like oh my god what happens if the opal actually goes beyond that you know why are you whacking why oh, aren't you, you going know, like right, bigger right, and trying right. to get a big ball out right. first and i don't know it i did a couple of videos this last season when i was down in the mine and i and iron iron uh ironstone boulders came out and I put them on the floor of the mine, and I set up my tripod, and I videoed me just stabbing into it with the jackhammer. Oh except they both popped open, and there, there was opal in the middle, and I wasn't expecting it because no, because I thought, I mean, I've only been doing it for 20 years, but I still don't have X-ray vision. Right. And so these people like messaged me like, "Why'd you do that? That was so stupid." And I go, "Well, okay, I didn't know." <laughs> Sometimes there's stuff in there, and sometimes there was right. isn't. But I was I wasn't expecting that. But it made for an interesting video. Yeah, that, that, that's. I'm impressed with Gene not only because you get to see him in the mine digging it out, and then coming back. But he also does videos in between while he's in there. So he'll take a minute and clean himself up sometimes, and there's other times. But he always apologizes. Sorry for the hair. Sorry for whatever. You know, yeah. haven't been up topside in about six hours yeah. or whatever. And, um, but then he's like taking a minute to do the video and show you where it's at and all that. And then he goes, well, I'm gonna go folks. And then at night when he should be like totally passed out, he's trying to shoot another video on some other things. And then comes home and shows kind of what he got. And look, I'm cutting this. It's, it's just, I like watching Gene. Well, thank you. And I apologize for the videos down in the mine because when I'm down there in the mine, I know it's a rare experience and not everyone gets to experience that so I want to share what it looks like but it's very difficult to photograph it no no but it is mm. it's very difficult to show what that looks like right so I try and I know it's a rare experience and I'm very grateful and I'd like to share because I know there's a lot of rock hound people out there opal people yeah. but, but just also people who are interested in nature and and uh but it's very difficult to photograph and try to uh, capture what it's like up there. Um, so I looked at the card. I don't know if I saw it on the card. What is the name of the YouTube channel? Hey, you got a YouTube channel? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, no, it's on Facebook. Two. What's the name of the Facebook page? My Facebook page is just Gene McDevitt. Oh, fantastic. And my Instagram is at Karoy. Awesome. Perfect. All that information will be down in the description section below, folks. Make sure to give him a follow. He's the real deal. Otherwise, John wouldn't be here. That's right. I mean, we're, we're all hiding, like, underneath the booth over here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're, we're, we're tucked oh, in here sorry. talking real deal with Gene. Gene, you are the man, bro. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate it. So is 8,000 roughly where you're stopping for Boulder? 8,000 is where I'm stopping. Awesome. You obviously could go to, I think... Maybe Diamond Pacific does 150, maybe? Pardon me? Does Diamond Pacific go to 150? I don't know what they end at. I know they do a 14. I know they used to go to 14. I don't... But I never... I, I mean, I've experimented with it, and I find they ate... I mean, again, if somebody has a better idea, please share it with me. <laughs> I am willing to experiment and willing to try, but I have found the 3,000, 8,000. And again, spend time on the 3,000 wheel. That is a great piece of information because I think a lot of lapidaries neglect it. I know I do. I'm a lazy phosphate cutter. I tell people phosphates don't make you the best cutter. You know, if you're if you're a mom and pop agate person, you're gonna you're used to spending quality time on something that you're worth that's worth showing off. Right, right, right. Also, also, I have I do get into some arguments with some Australians who like to stop at the three thousand, but I just tell them their eyesight isn't very good. 
looks, it, in a lot of cases, the Croyd stuff, particularly dark or iron stone, will look great after the 3000. But go to the 8000 because it's going to be just that much better. Think of it this way, folks. These aren't just numbers. The 8000 is more than twice the right. mesh. Right. So it's more than twice the polish. Just right. because it's the next wheel on the line, does it in this? So using seven wheels doesn't mean it's one seventh better. Right. It's no, more it's than double. twice. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> that is fantastic. Now, um, um, have you ever heard of other cutters with boulder using a compound uh, yeah. for a final polish? Oh yeah. I mean, uh, all sorts of stuff, like... Uh, perhaps not chromium, though, right? I don't know. I, I don't think I've heard Which chromium. Some people use Zam. I've heard... I've heard uh, some people use Zam, but not... Zam's not really for that. It, not, not the, It might work the metal, but... Right, not not Australians, uh, there's not an professionals Australian. that I know. But I've, but I've heard tin, cerium, uh, and then uh, I can't remember what some some stuff with beeswax and... Was, no, that, but, was that from Australia? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of that too. I don't remember what it's called. Right. I think it had the word lusta with like an Australian accent at the end of it, but I could be wrong. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, it's just like the gym master and, yeah. you know, everything's going to end, you know. Yes, they supposedly speak English, but we shouldn't. <laughs> We shouldn't rubbish them too much because they do produce these beautiful rocks. So their country does do some magnificent. And, and that is a thing about Australia. Yes, opals, yes, yes. But there's a zillion other beautiful rocks that come out of Australia. It is it is geologically an amazing place. You have some world-class chrysoprays here. If you don't mind, we take a look at it in a little no, bit. You, you go right um, ahead. I you. thought I saw the best in Tucson until I came here. And, <laughs> and I am blown away. Now, while, while John's pulling out some cool stuff for some education and most likely to grab by because he is an opaholic, um, have you seen any of the Australian turquoise that impresses you? I have never, no. I mean, I, I mean no, because I just haven't seen oh, okay. it. Okay, one's called like Amaru, and people have been mailing me cores. They're like, what do you think? And they're not really after that, but they find it. So there's so much untapped. Views. Oh, no, I think that there's a lot untapped in Australia. Because don't forget, Australia is the size of the continental United States. And they have less than a tenth of our population. And don't forget their climate. It's okay to live on the coast, but living inland is really tough because a lot of it's semi-arid, semi-desert. So I think that there's... I, I, uh, Australia is unusually geologically rich, mineral rich, and I there's a lot of stuff yet to be discovered there. Including some more awesome opals. Oh, I, there, yes. <laughs> if you look at a map, just even look at the state of Queensland. You look at the size of the state of Queensland. You look at if it has an overlay of where the inland sea supposedly was. That supposedly area that's uh, chemically appropriate, potential to find opal. And then you look at really how few opal mining areas there are. I think that there, there is. There's a lot more area to be explored. However, you try to navigate out there. In other words, if you've got a nine-inch drill, there's only so many roads. If you want to go to that way out, out of the way area, you're going to need a bulldozer. You need an exploration permit. You're going to need a zillion dollars worth of fuel. So yes, I believe it's out there, and yes, the exploration needs to be done, but it's not cheap. Yeah, no, for sure. And it's dangerous too. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't imagine going in those holes alone like he does. I mean... Oh, you're going solo, huh? Well, sometime... I mean, like this last season, most of my time I was by myself. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know... Oh, no, when I encountered... I mean, there was a western taipan down in the, in the mine with this last season. I mean, it's the most venomous land snake and on, they want on you our to, little planet. And they like, take it out and, like, not kill it, right? Let's just say I, I'm here. Okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Two no, of us no. went in, one came out, okay? I, know, I treat, I, listen, listen, I, I appreciate Australia, and like I said, I appreciate what Mother Nature has done. I treat everything with respect. Um, but if it's you or me, honey. I yeah. understand. <laughs> when it comes down to that, we all go back yeah. to our fight or, yeah. flight or fight, right? And oh, also up on the surface. Uh, uh, and I, I did run into a few snakes on the surface. They were going that way, I went this way, I saluted them and I said thank you, and that's fine. That's all fine. But but underground where the, the spacing is a bit tight, 
That's a little too. <laughs> you want to go face to face? That's a little. Japan. That's a little too. <laughs> a little too intimate for me. With uh, yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah. And you got these massive spiders too, right? You got the oh, there's big spiders, but they're not. I mean, they're just decorative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean they really aren't. They're not, they're. I mean, they might bite you a bit. Well, like okay, like and that's another thing. If an Australian ever tells you something is harmless, <laughs> all that means is it won't kill you immediately. Oh, yeah, immediately. No, no, but like they've got these huntsman spiders, and they say, oh, they're harmless. And I said, but they must bite. But that's how they hunt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll burn. It'll feel like a bee sting for two or three hours. But to an Australian, that's harmless. I don't want to be bur you know, feel like a burning bee sting for two. No, no, no. So yeah, there's centipedes. There's also there's a lot of redback spiders. They're like our black widow. Okay. But redbacks aren't aggressive. Oh, and like if you're if you ever go to an outhouse in Australia, always check under the toilet seat because they like no because redbacks nest in oh, out of the no. ways, out of the way places. Do you know, sir? Not yeah, I'd be checking for sure. I would not oh, want no, guy who the family jewels getting bit by some. Red-backed spider. No, the guy who does the uh, excavator work for me. He 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 was he was bitten in a very. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, and it's quite a good story, which I will not share. <laughs> no, I mean it's a good story. I mean it's a horrible story. And it, once you hear that story, you will always check under a toilet seat. <laughs> but I won't repeat the story here. No, no, it's fine. So. Um, I want to check out your other bucket, but I want to wash my hands because we only got really an hour before they close their doors here, and um, I could take a while to look at this stuff, and I want to get the, the gem fish light and get that interview done with Justin. Definitely. All right. But I'll tell you what, even though we didn't get to look at all of the material, tomorrow's another day, and it's such a pleasure to meet you, Gene. If you don't mind, I want to come back and pick your brain on some more of your stuff. I told you. I'm ask you some questions I'm about your polishing. Share. No, and I appreciate that you're being a teacher. You know, I'm, I'm serious. I appreciate that you're sharing the information. It's really my pleasure. I have lists that I've been collecting from ancient lapidary journals. I think I have almost every single one of some weird stuff, like tin on cork, oh, or no, like no, cerium on canvas, of, all and, these. And, and when you asked me, it made me remember, like there, there were some Australians that were mixing, I cannot even remember what the compounds were. And it was a few Mixing compounds. Things, mixing different compounds together with beeswax. And then there was something else, I don't even remember what it was. With and, beeswax. Yeah. <laughs> That's trippy. Yeah. Man, endless secrets. And I don't think that they're like, the old timers secret sauce was um, be became irrelevant. I just think that the po a lot of companies dropped out, and like tin was more tin was has become more expensive, and so you got to experiment, man. You got to try. I, I, I very much agree with experimenting, <laughs> and not necessarily throwing out what some old timer tells you. Because in, uh, even though technology has improved and the prices of technology have dropped, okay, that's great. But occasionally, some of those old-timer recipes could be very useful. Oh, okay. absolutely. Yeah, so no, I, I, I'm all about experimenting. And that's another thing that would happen in Tucson a lot. Somebody would come by, tell me that they've got some miracle compound, and my brother would always tease me because I'd, I'd bite on it every day. <laughs> oh, man. No, not that I necessarily believe this, but i like, okay, I'll try it. It's worth it. Okay, I'll try it. If it's a, if it's a 5% increase on the quality that you sell, oh, that's yes. worth every penny. Oh, I agree. And the I hours agree. that you're learning to, 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 that you're spending on learning how to use these compounds because everyone wants something different, uh, different approach, you know, leather, cork, felt, muslin, cotton, but then the stone wants to be approached a different way. We were talking about a lighter touch, right? Um, which, and then we were talking about how, like, Jade wants to be abused. Right. Gene, I'm coming back to bug you, man, if you don't mind. No, no, I told you, I'm happy to share. You're such a badass, dude. No, no, but I, 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 I'm happy to share for a few reasons. One, because I think it's important to share and to teach, but also because you actually listen. You know how a lot of people don't listen. You know, you listen and you think, I can tell. Lots of people kind of just... Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> no, I, I know. They can ask me how they want to polish a stone. I'll tell them and they're like, well, I think I'll just go to 3,000 like, like I have been for 55 years. Yeah. No, no, and I really <laughs> do appreciate that you share the information because I think it's... 
it's important to share the information. Thanks, Gene. I'll talk to you soon, my brother. All right. Thank you. Hey, uh, information for his Facebook and Instagram will be down in the description section below. If the other part, when I get to talk to him some more, isn't already in this video, and then, then that will be down below. Gene, you're such a badass, dude. Thank you. You're a pro. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Vegemite. And uh, get a little bit. Don't get too much. That's too much? No, that's good. It'll be tart. Ugh. <laughs> it's yeast. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's nasty. Uh, I'm down under. 